Okay, we're going to look at the MLA, some examples. It's through examples that we can really learn the details. So let's go ahead and begin on that. Garzanga, 1967, flash pictures to the right or left visual field of each patient whose corpus callosum had been surgically severed. So of course, right away we can see there's a problem because we have a year. In MLA, we don't include the year. Rather, we include page numbers. And in this case, we just have Garzella, Garzin, Garzanglia, Garzangiga, or whatever. But we have no page number because it's just referencing the whole general work. So it could be the whole paper in general. In one of the earliest studies, Anid, Sheena, and Sign, 1961, researchers presented a variety of stimuli to Yogi as he meditated. And then we have a second sentence, Anid, Sheena, and Sign reported no disruption of the Yogi's alpha wave as indicated by EEG recording by a tuning fork or a hand clap. So we have two sentences, we have two references to the same paper, but right away you can see there's a problem here. We've got the year, which we know is not right. We also know that we have one, two, three authors, and in MLA, we don't do that. In MLA style, if you have three or more authors you use at all, even the very first time in the paper, which is different from APA style. And then the second part, we go ahead and reference them the same way again. Now here we have no page number because again, we're looking at the overall paper, which is okay, but usually we would include a page number to be a little bit more specific. Personality changes may also occur later in life, new garden, patterns of aging, and extending the human lifespan, semicolon, you see the semicolon there, right? Semicolon, New Garden and Has ha Hagstab, 1967. So clearly 1967 is wrong because we do not include years in MLA. But what kind of case do we have here? This is something a little bit interesting. So let's take a look at this. New Garden is an author. New Garden and Hagstad are authors together on one paper. We have two, so we use the and here. That's also different than the APA. We do not use the ampersand in MLA, no. So we're inside the parentheses, but still we use the word A-N-D. Here what we have is Newgarten is the author, but he's the author of one work here and another work here. So we have, we're citing two sources, but by the same author. And in this case, we see they have quotation marks, which means it's a chapter of a book or it's a smaller part of something that's bigger. So we are making three citations here, but two are by the same author. The concept of chunking was introduced by Miller, Miller 154. What is 154? 154 is the page number. But of course, we do not need to repeat the name here. The correct way for this would be simply Miller and then the page number is here. Other authors focus on the role of effect. Gozank, American Psychologist, 1984, page 36. Well, we can see that this is a problem. This doesn't look right at all for MLA. Of course, in the MLA, we keep it simple. We just have the author and the page. Of course, we don't include the journal or the year or any other details like that. No comments either. Sternberg, 1966, was the first to report the effect of target set size on reaction time. Sternberg, 1966, used target sets of sizes 1, 2, 4, 4. So here what we have is a reference that is the same inside of the same paragraph. And we also have included the date here, which we really don't need. Now, if we wanted to write the date here, not inside parentheses, but just open like this for some reason we wanted to mention the date we could 
But in this case, we're just really talking about that paper. It's not really related to that year. The topic we're writing about is not related to that year, that is. So we want to go ahead and just use the MLA style, which is we don't need the year. That's an APA style thing. So we go ahead and cut that out. So here we just have the name, Sternberg was the first to report the effect size. And then later here, Sternberg again, used the target set. We don't need to do anything special. Now, of course, we could reference the page number if we wanted to, for example, 123, if, we, if this information was specific to that. But if the information was not specific to that, it's just the whole general paper, then we go ahead and we can just use the name in that case. So the MLA is more flexible this way than the APA. Garcia and Cooling, 1966, demonstrated that rats could learn aversions to specific flavors with minimal training. To do so, Garcia et al. exposed rats to noxious radiation shortly after they drank water with a distinctive flavor. And of course, here we can say this year here, it doesn't seem right for the MLA. We have two authors, one, two, so we go ahead and we write both of them. We use the conjunction and, and we have no date. If we wanted to, we could have the page number here. For example, 125 is the page. But if we're just citing the whole work in general, we don't have to have the page either. Kahn, Sterk, and Bank, 325, used biofeedback to treat asthma and Gamble and Elder, 67, used it to reduce muscle tension in addition to biofeedback. Kahn et al., 326, used a form of classical conditioning. So here we can see that we are a little bit better because here we have the page number that's correct for MLA, that's right. But here we have a problem. We have one, two, three authors. In MLA, if you have three or more authors, even the first time, you go ahead and use at all right from the beginning. And then down here we have Gam Gamble and Elder, 67, that looks good. And you use the conjunction and, no problem. And then down here, we've got this con problem. So we've got con et al. And that's OK, con et al. It will be multiple authors, three or more, use et al. Diaz, Guruno, Gururo, Rees, Langoons, Witt, and Holtman, Diaz, Guru et al. So here, this is strange. We're repeating the names again for some strange reason. And then again, we're repeating the names in the second sentence. And now we have a year. Boy, that's all messed up. So what do we do here? Right away, we use at all. We use at all because we have one, two, three, four authors, three or more use at all, even from the beginning. Again, in the second sentence, at all, again, we don't need to write them out. And here, we do not have any dates because we do not include dates in the MLA. We do not include the year. Bess Williams, Cloud Davies, Rob Robertson, Edwards, Giles, and Fowles. Oh, boy, how many is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight authors. So, of course, Right away, we're going to use at all. Changes in the delusions of Chinese schizophrenic patients have accompanied changes in Chinese society, Yu Fen and Nung, 1981. Here we have this problem and a comma. That is very unusual. That does not belong in MLA. So for MLA, what could we do? We just have the name and conjunction. Remember, no ampersand, like in APA, we would use an ampersand there, and the name here. We could include a page number, but here we didn't. We're just citing the whole work. One example of computer simulation of human problem-solving performance is a general problem solver, Null, 
Shaw and Simon, The Process of Creative Thinking, period. Boy, that's looking weird. Newell and Simon, GPS, a program that simulates human thought. Newell and Simon. Boy, this has lots of problems. One example of computer simulation of human problem solving performance is the general problem solver. So we have the open parentheses, closed parentheses, much more straightforward. And we have the at all here because it's three or more authors. And we have the name of a chapter or a subpart of a larger whole. Newell and Simon, that is two authors. We don't use that all because it's just two, it's not three or more. And then one of the chapters is called GPS and one of the chapters is called Human. So these are two works but by the same authors. Contemporary approaches, Rescura and Common, Heyman, focus on the role of informational variables and cognitive processes in classical conditioning. And here we have this problem of who goes first. And as in the APA, we have rules about this. So you want to make sure that when you have multiple authors inside the same per parenthetical, that you want to go ahead and use their alphabetical order, which in this case would be K comes before R. And don't forget the semicolon to separate the two separate sources. Postulates 1 and 2, page 47 of Hall, specify the neural effects of external stimuli. And of course, this is a little bit strange, right? This looks like it's backwards. So the correct answer would be Hall, no comma, 47. What is 47? That's the page number. According to Naomi Barron, page 194, reading is just half of literacy, the other half is writing. We do have a quotation here, so it's very important for a quotation to tell what page is it from. But in MLA, the way we do this is we simply write the page inside the parentheses. We're using the author's name inside the sentence. So we could put it right in here, couldn't we? One, nine, four. However, because the quotation is later, it's best to put it right after the quotation so we can see exactly what it is we're talking about. Although cats, dogs, and mice do not show the same kind of biased lateral laterality in Paul preference as humans do in handedness, songbirds to show do, I think that should be, do show a pattern of asymmetry in brain control of song that is similar to the pattern of brain control in speech in humans, Springer and Deutsch, 1981, chapter 8. Now, this is very confusing because we've got a bunch of problems here. This looks like APA style. We got this here, which of course MLA does not do. We have this here, which MLA does not do. And then furthermore, what we do have is something different for MLA. So MLA is just the A and D and the two authors, comma, and chapter is small ch with a period after it and eight. So that's the MLA approach. And the problem here is these are very specific. MLA has one way to do it. APA has a different way to do it. You need to really check how do they do their abbreviation. They're different. Very annoying, but get the book and follow the advice in the book. Very key. Here's an example from a video, which is kind of a special case, but actually MLA emphasizes that you should be able to cite all kinds of material, including media. Buffy's promised that there's not going to be any incidents like at my old school. So this is a quotation, so we need to know exactly where it came from. And in this case, we go ahead and Buffy is the name put here, Whedon, and then here is the time. 
But in MLA, the correct way to do this would be not to include the director like we have here, but instead to include the first or second, maybe the first one or two or sometimes three words of the title of the work and then here to have the exact time. And that includes hour, minute, second, and when is the beginning and when is the end. So MLA is very uh, different from APA in this approach. In 1988, a federal report observed that the current high level of attention to childcare is directly attributed to the new workforce trends. Now this is a case where you have a work but that doesn't have an author but rather comes from an organization, in this case the government. There is a quote there, so we do need to know exactly where it comes from. So it's on page 147, that's good. However, this here, U.S., U dot S dot, okay, United States comma. Well, it's, a, it's, hard, it's hard to explain, but hey, that's just the rule. MLA's rule is when you abbreviate United States, you don't abbreviate it. Rather, you write it out, in this case, United States comma, and then you write out the Department of the Government in full, and then you write the page number on the report that you found the quote from. You just have to know the rule, and that's the rule. The play presents an opposition between, quote, two worlds associated with two lovers. Zender, page 138. Romeo and Juliet's language of love nevertheless becomes fully responsive to the tang of actuality. Zender, page 141. So we have this case where we have Zender twice in the same paragraph. So the way for MLA to handle this is, of course, first of all, very simple, name and page number. No comma, nothing special. And then the second time for the second quote, just the page number because we already have the author in the same paragraph. Okay, well, that is a sum up of some examples from MLA. Of course, there are more specific examples where things get even a little bit more complicated, but I think that covers most of the ones you'll commonly see. Again, I love to get my ebook, and I have my MLA on the ebook. And every time I have a problem, every time I have a new situation, a combination of authors, or a special format like a video, what about a podcast? What about a YouTube video? That's all covered inside of there. If you've got the book, you can check it out quickly. All right, good luck on your citations with MLA.